that's a very good morning from beautiful Paradise Point here on the Gold Coast and um, my colleague and co-owner of absolutely famous Tony Stritch uh, is our guest this morning and Tony uh, you've won a really prestigious photographic um, well award or accolade during the week. Yeah there's a Australia New Zealand photography magazine and I entered a competition in it and um, thinking I'd like to get the photo hopefully but like get it published and um, get featured in the magazine but um, I won the monthly competition which is um, unexpected but it was really nice to sort of someone sort of likes what I do. Well you do some beautiful work and it was a, a beautiful photo of two fishermen Where, whereabouts was it taken? Um, that was in Koh Samui um, Jude and I were over there one year on holiday and we we're just walking early in the morning towards back towards the resort and saw these two fishermen out there and thought oh it'll make a good photo so I took a couple of photos and really pleased with how it came out in the end. So whereabouts exactly were you but for those who are unfamiliar? Uh, Koh Samui which is in Thailand um, yeah so yeah it's a bit of a happy place for us the Jude and I Thailand so we're just there. Of course being a good photographer a lot of it's about having a good eye for for the shot too isn't it? Yeah you're always looking and thinking well that'll make a good photo that wouldn't or, or whatnot but um, I've always been interested in photography and um, you know, since we've been on the Gold Coast I've got a bit more time now and, um, and focus on it. I was going to ask you that, when did you first become interested in photography? What sort of sparked um, your interest? I was looking for something after sport, you know, you're a bit old and your knees and you slow down and <laughs> you know, I've, I've always liked it right the way back from when I was a lot younger, um, the grandparents were keen on photography, so I think I probably picked up a bit from them and always liked taking photos and just oh, developed it. Um, with sport, we've always worked on a Japanese word called um, Kazan, which means continuous improvement. So, so you just chipped away, chipped away, and read books and looked at photos and thought, how did they do that? Or wish I'd taken that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course, you do some beautiful landscapes, but there's different skills obviously required for for sports photos. You, again, you've got to have an eye for, for the moment. Yeah, with the the landscapes, you, you sort of work out what you want or where you want to be. With sports, it's it's more about knowing a little bit about how the sport works and anticipating the action, and which is yeah, which is good fun as well. You know, I, I like all aspects of it. Sports, I do love. Yeah. Have you got a favourite photo you've taken so far? Um, yeah, probably a couple from Bali um, and then some portraits I took in Thailand that I really like. Um, I like the dark, moody, sort of sombre look, um, which is probably the area I'm heading sort of towards that I like, but um, I like all sorts. There's, there's nothing that I'm one genre that I'm, I'm sort of focused on. I, I just like taking photos and gives me a lot of satisfaction. It's nice now that you've got a real vehicle with the um, absolutely famous website to develop your talents and get it out there to the to the millions. Yeah it is, I've taken more photos now than I've ever, ever taken um, and you know a diverse sort of bunch of people which is fun too and, and trying to think of something different um, for, for each individual we, we end up photographing. There's been, of course we've been watching the Commonwealth Games and there's been some great photo opportunities there and some great pics taken and you would have enjoyed in particular the uh, men's triathlon race being a former New Zealand triathlon rep yourself. Yeah loved it, it was great to watch, um, Hayden Wild was amazing, he, he really won't die wondering, he put himself out there and had a crack at it but Alex Yee was just too good on the day, uh, I don't think Hayden was going to be able to beat him, um, if it come down to a sprint I think. Yeah, he probably would have been too quick, but he certainly made him work for it. And, um, a bit unlucky with the helmet issue, but that, that's, you're not allowed to touch your helmet until your, your bike's ranked. So I don't think his, um, his appeal will buy him anything. So, but you've got to, got to ask the question. Do you think he was hard done by? Um, it was a marginal call, could go either way, but generally if you look at all the others come in, they rack their bike then then take the helmet off. He was racking his bike with one hand and taking it off with the other. So he opened himself up for it, but 
I do think it's probably a bit picky. I mean, as I said, it's 50-50 call. Yeah. Which way it'll go, yeah. See, Wild's race tactics a little bit like Fubu Boy on the track. He just goes flat out from the start, and uh, he certainly never left uh, nothing in the tank, did he? No, he didn't. He didn't. But Alex Yee was a he's raced for Britain before as a runner, so he really top class runner. So I think um, Hayden thought, well, I've got to have foot in the lead. But realistically, uh, Hayden needed probably 25 to 30 seconds to, to actually be able to hold him off and he didn't quite have that and Alex Yee had two guys on the front of the bunch doing all the work for him so he came into the run a bit fresher than what Hayden was because Hayden did all the work and out the front and um, it was probably you know blew his legs a little bit. Lovely touch by uh, Wild near the end there to pat Yee on the back and wish him all the best when he had to pull over and stop for 10 seconds I thought that was genuine uh, real, real sportsmanship there. They're good mates, apparently, the two of them, off the yeah. field, and but fast competitors on it. And, yeah. You know, I imagine Hayden being a Kiwi, there'll be a few beers afterwards with Alex, and you know, a bit of um, the uh, bit of banter with it. So, what, what's the what was the key? To, how did you race triathlons? What were your tactics? With, and and what's the hardest part of a triathlon? Hardest part, probably the st uh, just before the start with the nerves. <laughs> yeah. Would be the hardest part, but. The ones I did were a bit longer than that. That was the sprint one um, they had, which is you know, shorter, so it's, it's just um, flat out all the way. The ones I did was 1500, 40 and 10. Um, it's basically getting a rhythm and, and, and pushing as hard as you could. So great sport, still love it. It was great to be involved with it. and uh, Met some great people who are still friends to this day. And of course, when before you started, you weren't much of a swimmer, you tell me. No, I was, put it in a word, I was rat shit. <laughs> um, I was a shocker, but um, it's, it's like anything, you, you identify your weaknesses and you work on it. And I went and saw a, a Blenheim coach called John Humphreys and um, he sort of worked on the stroke, chucked me in with all these little kids and, and I got my ass kicked for a few months with them and he worked on it and slowly but surely brought my swimming up to an acceptable level. Yeah, and of course, culminating your career culminated with you competing alongside your your son Sam and Nathan at the World Champs. That must have been a massive thrill. I'm still proud of that. It's still, you know, it's one of the things that you know, gives me a lot of satisfaction. The three of us turning out like that, and we used to train together a lot, and we did a lot together. It was really good, really nice family bond, and um, a time that I always remember fondly. Yeah, and. Back to the photography. What have you have you got sort of goals in photography? What or you just continue developing and just pardon the pun. Just yeah, continue <laughs> developing. Yeah, let's continue improving and and try different different types and try and develop my own style a bit more. I think um, I just want to keep taking it. Um, Jude does photography as well with me. We when we travel, we always do a photo workshop somewhere. Well, one day and. Just keep doing that, keep developing, and keep taking photos. I just like taking it. Um, I'll join a photo club here on the Gold Coast. Um, now COVID's just about over and done with, and um, and that that actually gives you inspiration and challenges you as well. Yeah, and of course we'll be posting more and more of your great work on uh, Absolutely Famous, both action and um, landscape one, so people can log in there and have a look, and if they want to buy any of your photos, they're able to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's the greatest compliment I think anyone could get, that people like it and would like to um, have it on their wall as well, most yeah. definitely, yeah. Fantastic, Tony. Great to have you on board. Well, our award-winning photographer, Tony Stretch. Thanks, Tony. Thank you.